continue our look into the Industrial Revolution, today we're going to focus on the transportation improvements that took place during this time. And one of the key things to understand about transportation and what it does is transportation connects locations. It connects community, one community to another, one town to another, a city to, from city to city and nation to nation. The more efficient the transportation, the quicker the transportation, the tighter those connections can be. And often and usually and initially, those connections are often economic so that you have, for example, the plantation is connected to the factory in New England. The southern plantation is connected to the factory in New England through transportation because the plantation creates the cotton. The factory in New England manufactures that into textiles, into cloth and, and, and useful items for, for people. And so there is a connection, therefore, between these to the factory and the plantation, between those two communities. And those connections can help to bind them together because they have similar economic interests. New England has an interest in, this, in the plantations doing well, and the southern plantation has an interest in the factories doing well, because each one depends on the other. New England needs the cotton, and the plantation needs the factory to buy their cotton. And so those, those, that relationship binds those two regions together. Um, and so we see that, and that's this is still true today, when you have uh, improved transportation between a location, you will see improved movement between people and ideas and goods and certain goods between those two locations. Um, not, not in every case immediately, but uh, often that is what follows, uh, at least over time, and sometimes quite rapidly. All right, so let's get to it. So initially, some of the first improvements that we see are the improvements in canals. So water travel is uh, essential. Water travel uh, for most of uh, human history has been the most efficient, and it is still one of the main ways that we transport goods um, all across the nation through uh, these large uh, shipping, these vessel vessels that, you know, transport hundreds of shipping containers from continent to continent today, um, this was still, the, this was the way of transportation uh, in the 1800s, 1700s as well. And so, uh, but the thing about water transportation is for the most part, you can only transport water where you've got a waterway. You don't have man, a lot of man-made waterways because it's just so difficult. But in the early 1800s, we start to have a boom in man-made waterways. We call these man-made waterways canals. So the early 1800s, it was easier and cheaper to move people and goods by water than by land. That's in many cases still t true today. Um, the Erie Canal is, is a man-made river that connects Lake Erie right here to uh, the to New York City. And really it goes, so this is the canal part. And this is roughly where the canal is. It actually should be a little lower because Lake Erie's right here. But you get the idea. Um, and so here, Lake Erie connects right across here to the Hudson River. And then this line here, it's kind of represented by this blue line, is the Hudson River down to New York City. So the canal is just this part. And really it's from about right here across the across here down to the down the Hudson River to New York. And so what you have is you have a connecting of the Great Lakes to New York City, uh, the one of the largest, and this kind of really enforces, reinforces that New York City becomes uh, such a, a important port in the United States, uh, largely in part because of the Erie Canal, because now all of these areas that are connected to the Great Lakes, they don't have to get to the Ohio River or the Mississippi River, they can get to the Great Lakes, and now they are connected by water to the rest of the coast of the United States and the rest of the world across the Erie Canal, they, they, thus bypassing the barrier of the Appalachian Mountains. And so we see that the, this canal is going to have a huge impact on the economic prosperity of this territory that was the Northwest Territory and is becoming different states. So we see Kentucky and uh, uh, you know, this is the Indiana Territory. It's going to be divided up into Michigan and Wisconsin. Ohio Territory um, is going, the Ohio, uh, the state of Ohio will um, greatly be benefited by the Erie Canal and certainly Pennsylvania and New York as well. And so 
we see that uh, this connection is going to be really important and it makes uh, economic activity um, that much better. Other advancements. So one is just the advancement of being able to dig these canals. This is a huge undertaking, so having the mechanism, the machinery to actually dig those canals is really important. But these aren't the only advancements. We also have um, an advance with this invention of the steam engine. We have the advancement of steam boats. So these are boats that are power that you know powered by steam engines that can therefore not only go downriver more efficiently but upriver, and that's the real improvement. Downriver wasn't generally it wasn't too difficult. Uh, this certainly will speed that along and make it more efficient. But the upriver, the return route was always very difficult. And now that is no longer so difficult. Um, Steamboats uh, can go upriver very efficiently and easily. Uh, and so this is going to improve river travel and canal travel, but primarily river travel uh, for the next uh, several uh, decades. Uh, the steam, uh, so uh, the steamboat along with canals. Now, the, there's also improvements to roads, uh, and we have like the national road, and then we're going to talk about railroads next. And all of these things make it easier to move goods. And as we talked about before, this connects the nation. Uh, one that one that is not exactly a transportation impro uh, improvement, but is a allows for rapid communication is the telegraph. And so the telegraph is going to change things instantly. So you can get once you set up the system of the telegraph line. Once you get a line from one location to another, you can now communicate almost instantly and through Morse code. And so the telegraph is going to rapidly change It's going the way information is transmitted. Uh, it just takes a matter of setting up that infrastructure of the telegraph lines. And so one of the things that you'll see as we get to the railroads next, all along where we have railroads, we will also set up telegraph lines in many cases to because you're already having to clear a space for the railroad. Now you can set up the telegraph line and you can communicate from one city to another very easily. And so the railroad, though, is going to be a huge change because we are now no longer transportation is no longer dependent on water travel across a continent. You can, once you can set up and just think about it, river travel is still great, but it's only good where you have rivers. Now you are no longer bound by the natural, uh, the, the natural resources that are there. You're no longer bound by, by nature in a sense in that you have to have a river there. Well, canals change that a little bit, but think about the difference in creating a canal versus creating a railroad. For a canal, you've got to dig basically a ditch big enough for, for ships to travel across. And that's very difficult. Now, a railroad, what do you have to do? You simply have to lay tracks. Now, you've got to get it flat enough surface to where the railroad can, can operate, and you've got to make it, you know, you've got to set those tracks in place. But that is much easier than building a canal with a lock system. And so railroads are going to transform the nation and the world ultimately because you can you are no longer dependent upon the 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 placement of rivers and where those are you can transport goods huge quantities of goods over great distances as soon as you've built the infrastructure and one of the big chain one of the big events really um, from the 1830s on through 1860s is the creation of railroads all across the nation and it continues after the 1860s certainly but kind of one of the the big points in the 1860s is that we actually connect from coast to coast um, railroads from you know we get the the great railroads across the nation excuse me, we get the transcontinental railroad where we can now, we are now connecting the, the West to the rest of the nation. And so this is huge because now, you know, there's several different mountain ranges that you have to get through to, to successfully um, transport goods across the nation, the Rocky Mountains and the Sierra Nevada Mountains, not to mention the Appalachian Mountains. And so now we have transportation all across the nation. Mm -hmm.